Ascension Sunday to you. I hope that I was the first one to wish you a happy Ascension Sunday. This is the day when we remember in the book of Acts where the risen Jesus, the risen Christ, ends up leaving the disciples, a kind of a once and for all. And so it's a bit of a farewell Sunday and then the disciples get to take on the task of doing Jesus's work. And so we'll hear that story and much more today. So no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome to worship with us this day. And let us do just that right now. We worship the God who inhabits our world and indwells our lives. We need to look up to find God. We need only to look around within ourselves, beyond ourselves, into the eyes of another. We need not listen for a distant thunder to find God. We need only listen to the music of life, the words of children, the questions of the curious, the rhythm of a heartbeat. We worship the God who inhabits our world and who indwells our lives. Let us pray. God, you are love and deep compassion. Jesus leads us in word and deed. We have not been orphaned. The Holy Spirit, our constant companion, breathes in us day and night. The community of faith, of the faithful exists beyond time and space. We have not been orphaned. God's hope marches us forward, carrying us through life. Despair and fear are commonplace, but so is your presence and your care. We have not been orphaned. Thanks be to you, O God. Amen. the offertory plate all set. So today I want to want you to think about someone who you really, really love. So think of one person, one person who you really, really love, and now throw that person into the plate. Whoa! <laughs> Way to go there. Excellent. Your offering of love to that one person means a lot to God. So thank you for that. You know, today I want to tell you a story and I think you know the story. So maybe you can help me tell it, okay? Sound good? Thumbs up if you think that's a good plan. You're gonna help me tell the story. The story begins with a tiny little baby. Do you think you could pretend that you have a tiny little baby in your arms? Oh, look at that little baby. The baby's name is Jesus. And that is what we remember on Christmas, baby Jesus being born. Now, he grows up rather quickly, and right about in January and February, we usually celebrate something called Epiphany. Can we all say that together on three? One, two, three. Epiphany! 
Well done. Epiphany is where we remember that Jesus called out to the 12 disciples and said, please follow me. Okay, maybe it didn't go that way, but he said, come along, come along, see what I do and I'll teach you. So can you do that motion for me, the come along? Let's try that together on three. One, two, three, come along. So we have a little baby Jesus who grows up and he tells the disciples, come along, come along, learn from me and follow what I do. Well, then we get to Lent and that's where we remember Jesus died, right? And we walk to the cross with him. When then he died on the cross, you remember that story? We tell it uh, during Holy Week on Good Friday. Is that though where the story ends? Hmm? Can you say it a little bit louder? I didn't hear you. Is that where the story ends that Jesus just dies and the story's over? No, very good. No, because they put him in a tomb, right? And they sealed it shut. What did they put over the tomb to seal it shut? Jesus's body inside. What did they use to seal it? What was that? You're right, a rock. They put it in there, a big stone. But when the ladies came that morning, there wasn't anything. There was but Jesus had risen to new life. Jesus lived. He didn't die. He lived. And now for the past couple of weeks, we've been telling the story of how this newly alive Jesus is walking around and he gets to see all of his disciples again and remind them all that he taught them. And today, Today is where we kind of end the story a little bit with Jesus, just for right now. And Jesus goes up, 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 and away. That's what it means to ascend. Ascend is to go up, 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 and away. Can you do that with me on three? Up, up, and away. Ready? With the hands. With the hands. Get your hands out. Ready? One, two, three. Up, up up and away. That's what we're, we're thinking about this day is how Jesus goes away, but oh, wait, oh, from last week, do we remember? God is all around us, even inside of us. So every single time you are kind to someone, every single time you share, every single time that you help someone or show any kind of love, then Jesus shows up again in you. Is that pretty cool? So go do the things that Jesus did. Go be kind, pray for one another, help each other out. Sound good? Great, amen. We'll hear the story now of the risen Christ as he departs from his disciples and ascends. So when the disciples had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Oliviet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. 
When they had entered the city, they went up to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. I imagine you know what it's like to be in the shoes of the disciples. There they were standing with Jesus, who was about to leave them, to leave them again. He'd come back as the risen Christ, had more memories with the disciples, and there they were, standing there, watching him depart from them again. I imagine you've been in those shoes a time or several times before in your life when you're standing there and you know what was. You know the reality of what had gone on, you experienced it, but yet now the new thing that is ahead, life after Jesus, isn't clear at all. And do you see the space between my hands here? In this space here is the gulf that forms between what was and what will be. And there the disciples are. And I imagine their jaws to be just on the ground because they can't, you know, it's sort of this terrifying reality that Jesus will no longer be with them and they don't know what is emerging next. I say that you probably know that experience. You probably have walked in those shoes because I'm assuming you have. Maybe when you've dropped a child off, no longer a child, but an 18 year old, you've dropped them off for college, their first semester at the dorm, and you're hugging to say goodbye, and you are facing that gulf in between. You are standing there at the end of what was, and yet how they're gonna do their first semester, what's gonna happen at home without them, those things aren't yet clear. And so there you are standing, looking at that great unknown. Or perhaps you've been at the bedside of someone that you loved so dearly. Maybe you rushed to get there to be there for their last breath. And there you stand at a departure, not able yet to predict how you will live without this person in your life. Maybe even a, an end of a relationship. Maybe it's a, a divorce where what was is no longer working. And now what will be is not yet clear. Or maybe it's a friendship dissolving or some other relationship that you've been a part of. You can't quite see yet the other side. Some of these changes come into our lives and, and we can foresee them coming. You know, your child does really well in high school and they go on all these college tours and you know you can safely predict that the day will come when you have to say goodbye. That's quite foreseeable. With the death, maybe it's a gradual letting go, especially if the person was sick or maybe their memory wasn't what it was or dementia had set in. And so it was a gradual letting go, fits and spurts of no longer having that relationship that you once had with that person, watching very, watching, you know, their life change and maybe their skills diminish. And so it's this piercing goodbye, this letting go that happens over time. And other times it can be rather abrupt. Maybe it's that divorce that feels like you got the rug, the proverbial rug pulled out from under you. And it's maybe things that you didn't see coming or you didn't have any sort of ideas about prior. And so all of these create a, a chasm and we stand there knowing what has been before, yet we can't yet predict what will come. So there we are, like the disciples, hanging with our jaws down, not yet knowing what's next. Now, you've heard me say this once, twice, three times. 
You've heard me say, and it bears repeating this day, because I think we need to remember it. We all, we all right now in society, even around the world, we are all grieving. Because those abrupt changes that entered into our lives with not a whole lot of warning, now they're piling up even more. And we don't know. <laughs> Every week we talk about the difficulty of this time. We talk about how unsettling it is to not know that other side. And so there we are, still looking out at the void. We've carved out so many things from the in-between cancellation on this, a postponement on that. All of these collective, I'm going to call them pings, fire at us and they set off all kinds of grief if we're aware of it or if we're not. That funeral that you didn't get to attend in person, you sent a card but it still stings at you that you couldn't be there in person. Summerfest, all your plans to attend Summerfest. Now that's a loss, a gathering of seeing that group of friends that maybe you only see once a year. It's all of those pings and jabs and scars that get tossed at us every day. This unsettling reality. And even our students are experiencing it now. I know schools are doing supply pickup times where you have to go to school that you haven't been to perhaps since March and you pick up the, the school supplies, the gym shoes that no longer fit or the ruler and you take it home. That's another ping of grief there. The award banquet at the end of the year that you were so looking forward to that now has to be done over Zoom. That is another ping. And all of these on top of everything that is mounting in our society, it adds up to grief. How do we know this? Because we see signs of grief, telltale signs. We see acting out a couple weeks ago when it was okay to go to the bars. We saw the rush of people going off to the bars to gather together without masks without any sort of throwing caution to the wind. Acting out is a sign of grief and loss. Anger and violence. We see acting out in the greater amounts of depression that are looming or just an overall general feeling of sadness. The rising anxiety, the feeling of being overwhelmed, tired, exhausted, all signs of grief, collective grieving, pings and jabs and scars. And it's time for us to remember and to acknowledge all that is no longer. And there we stand, just as the disciples did with our jaws down to the floor, wondering what will be. How will we cross that chasm, that void that was created for us back in March? Are you sensing a but is coming on? Where, Pastor Beth, where's the hope-filled part of all this? Come on, we know to expect that from you. I found it. The first half of our reading is, is sad, Jesus departing from them, the second part, which you might, your eyes kind of might have glossed over, you kind of tuned out because there were so many names, right? Did it, did it feel like a little bit of a contact list? We were hearing about those now, and that was the first thing I thought of when I saw those collection, the collection of names there. We have this little attendance report there of, you know, James, son of Elpheus, and blah, 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 are all gathered, and, and they take like a little trip together. I imagine it to be, you know, they went off to Pilgrim Center and they had an adult retreat and now they're returning to the city. And where do they go? They go into the upper room. 
if you hear the Last Supper in that, you'd be correct in that. They go up to this space to be this community, and they're finding that they're taking some of the old pieces, some of the old practices, they're praying together, they're they're staying together, all these disciples, they're taking what they learned from Jesus, and now they're facing that chasm, that void of sort of building up what is next. And it's not yet clear to them, but we have a signal. The last line said that women were included in this gathering in the upper room beyond Jesus. So now an emerging of something new is coming in and they're trying to figure it out. They're trying to cross that divide, that gulf, and they're trying to figure out new ways of being the community, relying on some of the pieces that they've learned that have happened historically among them. And now new things are emerging. They're including women. They're, they're expanding their notions of what it means to be people of faith. And so I wonder, as we begin to enter into that chasm, to cross that void together, I wonder if this will do us well to help us. I wonder if this will do us well to prepare us and influence us for what might be on the other side. What if we all, all together, we were to think of this kind of time that we've shared together, but apart. The, we're, vid, vid, ugh, the digital, there we go, digital worship together. What if we think of it now, no longer as a temporary thing? What if we set aside some of that language? Let's kind of stop calling it temporary or that on-screen worship or, you know, not real church? What if we set all those things aside that you might have said in the quietness of your heart? And what if we instead change our language and we say, this is what God is doing now in our midst. This is the new thing that God is doing on that other side of the chasm. The work that we are doing now in starting to cross this threshold will influence what comes out on the other side. So what if we continue to open ourselves up, see it as a faithful response to what God is doing? Let's see it as carving that path to our future. Say it with me. Will you repeat after me? I want to hear you. Repeat after me. This, this is worship. This is my church. This is what God is doing now to influence and prepare us for what awaits on that other side. Amen. Amen.
Jesus had departed and the community then filled that void of where he was, the scriptures say from today that that new crowd of people devoted themselves to prayer. And so with that same spirit, let us pray. Good and gracious God, we remember that your love and your presence are never far from us. We pray this day for each and every person who is sick right now, every person who is tending to the needs of those who are sick. God, this day our hearts break open for the funerals that do not get celebrated in person together. Or the weddings that are celebrated without a gathering of people around. This day we think of the graduation stages that are left bare with no congratulatory clapping. Oh God, for each and every school, that is closing out a school year very different than any that have gone before. Oh God, you know our needs. You know us. And so we ask that for whatever is on our hearts, whatever, it is, it, whatever is on our minds this day, that you carry it forward, that your will be done. O oh God, release us from all that binds us, the tombs that still lay claim on our lives. For the many who are also entombed, for all who are scared right now, for all who are being beaten in their homes, for those families that are absolutely on the margins, for communities that have been ravaged. God, this day, we know and trust your spirit. We are reminded of it so powerfully this morning. So we trust you. We release what it is that we're worried about, scared about, uncertain about, we release it to you, O oh God, in holy trust. This we pray in the name of the still risen Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Every time during children's time these days, I've been asking the kids to throw something into the offertory plate. And so now I ask that question of anyone in the room. Adults of all ages, children of all ages, go ahead. And right now I want you to throw into the plate as an offering to God anything that you have done in the past week to perhaps take care of someone. How have you helped? How have you served? How have you spoken a kind word? Maybe given a do donation? I want you to throw it into the offering plate. Go ahead. Hey, I can see you. Yep, okay, there you go, you got it. A little less enthusiasm than the kids, but I'll take it. And now this day, we fill the plate with all the ways that we give. Through our time, our talent, in bringing this worship to you every single Sunday, and also through our monetary offerings, and we give thanks for those. And may God bless all the ways we give and serve. Amen.
At the feet of Jesus, I will lay my burdens down. I will lay my heavy burdens down. In the stillness, I can hear my Savior calling out. Come to me and lay your burdens down. So I will lay down my struggles, I will lay down my shame, and all the fear I drag around me, like a ball and chain. And I will sing hallelujah to the one who sets me free. And you will find me at the feet of Jesus. You will find me at the feet of Jesus. In the arms of Jesus, I will find my peace and rest. I hear him calling, come to me and rest. Carried by my shepherd cradle, tightly to his chest. There and there alone my soul finds rest. So I will rest in the shelter of my Savior's embrace, hidden safely in the refuge of His mercy and His grace. And I will sing hallelujah to the one who sets me free. And you will find me At the feet of my Savior, at the feet of my King, I will bow down in worship, and I will lift my voice and sing, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, to the one who sets me free. And you will find me at the feet of Jesus. You will find me at the feet of Jesus. As a member of First Congregational United Church of Christ, I promise to continue to be the church by participating in worship and serving our neighbors. I promise to be as diligent as I can about my giving to support our ministries. I will e-give even temporarily, use PayPal, mail my offerings, or use the parking lot to secure your mail slot. I promise to practice social but not spiritual distance, remaining connected with my church family, and letting Pastor Beth and others know about my health, my spiritual and mental well-being, and my prayer requests. I promise to keep an open mind and willing spirit in engaging church and its ministries in new ways so that together we continue to be a vessel of our still-speaking God. I promise to lean on my faith in God and cling to hope to shepherd me through all the uncertainty and unknowns of this wilderness time. Thank you for worshiping with us this day. Come back next week. We have a big Sunday plan for you. We have our Pentecost Sunday where we welcome the Holy Spirit. So wear red or white. Red or white are usually the colors of Pentecost Sunday. And snap a picture of yourself too if you would. Let us see what you're wearing. Post it to Facebook. We'd love to see those images of you. And now, as we end our time together, we remember that the work of Jesus is just beginning. And so we go from this time of worship, this time of prayer, this time of giving of our offerings, this time of singing praise. We go now into the world to love as Jesus did, to build and dream just as he did. And so may the peace of Christ ever be with you as you head on out. Amen. Amen.